everybody, welcome back to the Grognard's Computer Corner, and I want to apologize, it's been a couple weeks since I got the last video out, uh, real life and springtime's kind of cropped up, and I've been busy with some other stuff, and I may have got distracted with a video game. Don't judge me, I can do that. Before I get into, uh, into this video, I wanted to go ahead and give a shout out to everybody who subscribed to my channel. We've broken 70 viewers or 70 subscribers to my channel. And whereas that may not seem like a lot and compared to some of my colleagues, uh, uh, like Derek and uh, Kevin over at Big Board Games, it's not a lot, but to me, it's a hell of a lot. And believe me, I appreciate every single one of you guys subscribing to me for for a guy who kind of started this whole video thing out as, as a way to supplement the podcast and then uh, decided to chuck the podcast and, and, and go with the video cast and uh, not really having a lot of exposure out there. I don't I don't go to a board game geek or Consim world or any of those other places to post. It's it, it it's it's very nice that I've been able to get as many as many. Uh, uh, viewers and uh, subscribers to my channel as possible. Now we're just we gotta shoot for 100 now. <laughs> Anyways, what we're gonna be looking at today is we are looking at Full the Gap 85, and this is a game from John Tiller Software. And those some of you may know the name John Tiller Software. Back in the uh, late 90s, he did a, a series of games. That were rather famous. The uh, they eventually would be known as the campaign series. He did them for Talonsoft Software. It was East Front, West Front, Rising Sun, and Middle East Crisis, Middle East something, something Middle East. I can't remember. Um, and they were really fun computer games. Uh, you can actually still get uh, the entire campaign series from Matrix Games. Uh, I I have. I have them. I have all of them except for the Middle East one. And I about once a month, uh, we'll go ahead and crack it open, and play a scenario on it. But they were really fun computer games for the late '90s. In the early 2000s, he basically took the lessons that he had learned from uh, the campaign series and started releasing a whole passel of other games, all basically using the same engine. So if you if you know the in, if you know the interface and how one engine works you pretty much know how to play all of his games. And he'll, his, his, most of his games, yeah, his, his Panzer campaigns, his modern uh, conflict games, uh, Panzer battles, squad battles. I mean, he's got games that run from Mexican-American War, War of 1812, Revolution, Civil War. You know, he's got one game for the Age of Renaissance, you know, musket and pike type stuff. A whole bunch of World War II Several games leading up to and including, you know, the the hypothetical Cold War gone hot, which is kind of what we're taking a look at right now. He's got he's got uh, four games in in what what I like to call his 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 eighty five series: um, Northern Plains eighty five, Full Gap eighty five, Southern Plains eighty five, and Korea eighty five. Uh, and they all, if you haven't figured it out, they all take place in 1985, which is, you know, one of my favorite areas, eras for, for hypothetical warfare. But before we really want, before I really got in, want to get into the game, I do want to go over some things that people probably aren't going to like about it. And these are little, I want to get the detractions out of the way first. Um, the graphics are garbage. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and open up one of the scenarios. If you're okay, and I should probably turn the sound down, because that sound is probably blowing everybody's ears out. Remember where the sound is. Yeah, okay, well, I'll turn the background sounds off. Um, this is basically the 2D view. 2D view of view of the map, and from my perspective, I don't mind it that much. I don't need a lot of fancy graphics in my games. The gameplay is what's more important to me. It basically uses a lot of NATO symbiology, as you can we can see here. We've got mech infantry, mech infantry, you know, armor, artillery, helicopters, um, and what I think is just you know real passable terrain. I mean, you can tell village woods terrain, you know, hill, 
hills, streams, rivers, roads, paths. To me, this isn't that big of a deal. I don't play a game for, for the graphics. Uh, I play the game for the gameplay. There are people out there who are only about the graphics and will absolutely hate this game. Now, the cool kind of cool thing is there's there's five different views that you can play this game in. Um, so you've got the big wide out view, which you know sometimes I'll flip back to for the for the grand overview of being able to see okay where what's the entire you know situation look like, and then you've got kind of a more zoomed in view. Sometimes I'll use this, and I mean you can tell you've got wire, you've got minefields with the strength of the mines there, supply. Um, and then this is the view that I, 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 I tend to play in the most. Then you do have a 3D view. This is kind of the 3D pulled out view. And yeah, it's not that pretty. <laughs> but it, it's hard to tell what things are. It's like, yeah, okay, those are woods. Uh, you know, I, if you don't know what these are, it's like, are they pillboxes? Are they Daleks? You know, you can't really tell. And then there's the, the the even further zoomed in 3D view, which is a little bit better because now we can see, all right, these are buildings. You got the bridge here, but it's still, at the end of the day, it's not a pretty game. And you can even get into, let's see if I can find some. They, when you're in this 3D view, let's see, there are some different alternative ways of looking at it. Uh, yeah, you can do 3D counters, which you can't really see. But there, are, okay, like these guys right here, itty bitty tiny guys that represent infantry, and I think that's a M113, and that looks like that's an artillery. But it's really hard to tell. I don't bother playing with this view. I mean, it's just honestly, as campaign series that it didn't amount to that better graphics, but you know, whatever. Um, so if you're a fan of graphics and graphics are why you play a game. You're probably not going to enjoy this, but you're shooting yourself in the foot. The gameplay more than makes up for the graphics of it. So let's basically flip back to to the graphics uh, that I like to play in. Um, so we'll just go over a little bit uh, of a, what a unit looks like. I mean, so we click on this mech infantry unit. It's a fixed unit, so it means it's in a fixed position. You can't move. And you can pretty much tell green, it's American. Uh, and then basically A111 Armored Combat Regiment. 23 vehicles at 100% means it hasn't taken any casualties. Morale A. Morale is rated from A to F, uh, A being the best. Movement is how many movement points it has. Fatigue, how much fatigue it's built up. We'll be getting into that in a little bit. Um, then, that, then in any hex you click on, right underneath it is the, the hex itself. So it's a town hex, so it's minus 30% for the attacker. Uh, the elevation, eh. Visibility, how far you can see from this X, and supply. Uh, supply in this game is is two different ways of doing supply. Uh, you can just do just regular supply, which each hex has a supply percentage uh, label to it. And as long as the unit's not cut off, every turn it rolls. All right, whatever the supply value is, bam! If it rolls under that, it has supply. If it rolls over that, it's out of supply. Kind of easy. And then there's virtual supply trucks that you can turn on. There's a whole bunch of optional rules. We'll get into that in a little bit. Um, virtual supply trucks that actually you have to, uh, the trucks actually have to draw a path to where you are and the further you are away from the supply hex. And I think, yeah, because here's, here's, here's a NATO supply hex here. So it actually physically, ha the computer physically traces uh, the hexes out movement wise with these virtual supply trucks and the further you are the way the less chances you have. I don't like playing with that. It's a pain in the ass. I don't like supply anyways. We know I don't like dealing with supply. Um, I should probably say the gain is one kilometer per hex and each turn is about three hours. Well, it is three hours. Some of his games, I think some of his Panzer campaign gun games are two hours per turn, but it's basically three hours for a dawn turn, three hours throughout the day, Three hours for a dusk turn, and then nighttime is six hours. So get that out of the way. Um, and then get back, getting back to the actual unit itself, you go ahead and click on the unit. You can actually see mixed Abrams Bradley unit, which unit they're with, first squadron, and you know they're basically their entire breakdown of their higher hierarchy and headquarters. Then their ratings for their attack values: hard is twenty-eight with a range of two hexes, soft, which 
everybody should know hard is against armored and soft is against infantry. Soft value of 24 at a range of one hex. Their assault value, the anti-aircraft value, defense. It is a hard target. It is a recon unit, uh, thermal sights, and it is trap. And you see down here, it also changes a little bit of what the hex is. It okay, gives you gives you what hex sides have. So you got a secondary secondary road coming in this way, a river coming in this hex, a river coming in this hex, and our heavy bridge on this hex. And you see this little number of 230. That's basically the the hex's uh, capacity, uh, its current capacity. Uh, a hex can maintain about mm, I think it's 900. Maybe a thousand capacity before it gets overstacked, and if you're in an overstacked hex, it's a bad thing for you because you take a lot more casualties. Or if you're firing into an overstacked hex, you do a lot more casualties. Um, and a quick view: 230. That's the capacity right now. I'm not over overstacked. Uh, to figure, if you uh, to just do off the top of your head, each vehicle is worth 10 points. Each infantry is worth one point. Kind of easy to figure that out. So, and then we've got a, a recon platoon helicopter here, and it goes down to a recon platoon, 11th ACR, 35 men, movement 28. Now, if you notice, the movement 28 for the helicopter is different than the movement 108 for the Bradleys, and even, well, I don't think I have any regular, any, any regular infantry here. And then helicopters are 104. But all units have different movement rates, and all units have different costs for moving um, and then you can go into march mode uh, column mode which will allow you to move even further but you take more casualties uh, if you're attacked in that mode you, you do less damage if you attack from that mode uh, there is a master chart inside the game that'll tell you and pretty much every game has this let's see if i can find it yeah parameter data right here which basically kind of has all the parameters for the scenario design in it. As you can see here, yeah, stacking limits, road 1000, maximum 2400, and then the different speeds, uh, you know, different artillery values. It's just all this is background behind the behind the scenes type uh, type stuff that I usually don't pay too much attention to. But you know, then you get down into the movement costs. You know, for motorized, clear six movement points, vineyard 45. Sand eight, town thirty, and it's different for each unit. So, like a like a soft half track, a clear six, six vineyard forty five, forty five. Most of these are probably going to be the same. Yeah, field of those thirty, and then for a soft half tracks twenty. If you really want to get into it, you got that. Um, so basically, it's it it's it's one side does all its actions, and the other side does all its actions. It's your it's your combination move shoot. You don't have any set. Uh, turn sequence. You can do whatever you want, however you want. If you want to attack with one unit or fire with some artillery before you attack with a regular unit and then move up some unit and then maybe assault with them, find out what the assault does and if that works, pour some more fire into the hex or move. You got that combination. Uh, firing basically takes up one third it's 30%, yeah. Firing takes up 30% of units' movement action. So basically all units, with the exception of artillery, all units can move three times or shoot three times if they don't move. Uh, of course, as, they're move as they expend movement, uh, the number of times they can shoot go down. Artillery can drop artillery twice per turn. Um, one of the things that I really like about this game, and you, we, don't, we don't see it a lot in... in not really in tabletop games and not very much in in computer games is that each unit has a thing called the fatigue rating it, basically every time a unit gets shot at it has a chance of taking fatigue and is basically a representation of, of the mental strain and just the longevity a unit's been in combat um, if they take casualties their fatigue goes up if they do operations during nighttime their fatigue goes up Every time the fatigue threshold hits 100, it reduces their morale by one category. So A will go to B, B go to C, C go to D. And eventually you can build up, I think, uh, 100, 200, 300. I think once you hit 400, 400 is the max fatigue, and then you're maxed out of that. Of course, by that time, an A-class unit is looking at what? A, B, C, D, E, E morale. And if you if a unit is off the line, doesn't move, doesn't do anything, gets a little bit of that fatigue back. 
I actually think that's a pretty cool mechanic um, because a lot of times in computer games, especially when we're talking at the uh, uh, the platoon, uh, company, battalion level, you just run the units as long as they can until until they until <laughs> until they can't, can't go any further. Uh, usually through combat or you know being broken through morale. The fatigue value makes you pay attention to how much fire your units are taking and pulling them out of the line. Because every time the morale drops a category, every time you get shot at, there's a chance for you to become disrupted. Uh, and it's it's basically a six-sided dice roll. Uh, it's like on a six with a or with morale A, you only fail it on a six. Morale B, it's a five or six. C, it's a four, five or six, so on and so forth. So as you can see, as you as you accrue, increase your fatigue and your morale goes down, it also increases your chance of being disrupted. Disrupted is bad because that basically halves all your firepower in half. Not a real good thing, and you can't launch attacks with them. Um, which can be a little bit annoying because most Soviet formations are begin at a C class category, and most uh, NATO formations are A's and B's. Which is why Soviets throw lots and lots of troops at you. Um, if you become disrupted, your your morale goes down another category. If you become isolated, your morale goes down a category. If you're low on ammo, your morale goes down a category. It's it's real easy to lose morale, and the lower your morale is, the, the quicker bad things happen to you. So morale and fatigue are the two things you need to really keep an eye on mostly with your units. Um, so that's just basic kind of general gameplay, and there are, you do have uh, your artillery dialogue. Ooh. I hope that didn't blow everybody's ears, ears out. I know it blew mine out. Um, you've got artillery dialogue and air mission dialogues, and you call it the air mission. It just gives you the, it gives you what what air assets are available to you, and it usually takes use an air asset. It usually takes about twenty four hours for it to recycle before you can get it back again. Um, and as here we're looking at uh, the Soviets, uh, uh, or no, yeah, this is the Soviets, unless so I don't have Fog of War on. Now, 67th Bomber Regiment consisting of 36 SU-24 fencers. These are their attack values. Their best is a night bomber, and then their overall command, 27th Bomber, full attack air, you know, Warsaw Pact, and then 68, 168th Bomber Regiment of 36 SU 24s to warrant the guards attack of SU 25 frog clips, so on and so forth, recon units. Uh, when you have fog of war turned off, recon units really don't do much. Uh, I, if you're going to get into the series, I suggest playing several games with the fog of war off first, just so you get an idea how the computer plays. And if you got an idea how the computer plays, it'll give you a good idea how you should play. Now, I've been playing Full to Gap, and I, I actually have another one of these games, uh, Middle East 67. I, I've probably played 20 games, 30 games, maybe a little bit more. Most of them solo, some of them head-to-head uh, -head via PBEM, and I'm still not real good with it. I used to play with Fog of War on all the time, and I used to get my ass handed to me. Um, so basically, I've recently turned Fog of War off, and I'm starting to understand more how the gameplay is done. So anyways, that's just a little... A little offset. Um, there seems like there's a lot of buttons up here, and there are, and a lot of lot of commands. But most of them you don't have to worry about. I mean, you got map zoom, which you know you can do with your middle mouse button. Uh, you know the button to rem you know divisional markings. I like having divisional markings on, so I know which divisions belong to who. You know, clear the map of counters. Uh, this is to put bases on if you're using the 3D mode objectives. And then a whole bunch of, you know, you toggle a whole bunch of visible hexes, what that unit can see, you know, let's see, what's that one, you know, contour lines for the hills, like, you know, it's just some, a lot of them are behind the scene administrative type stuff. Uh, and then, you know, you've got all your settings, you know, prompt beep on error, blink halt, well, you know, just a whole bunch of stuff. If you've played uh, his campaign games from the 90s, a lot of these are going to look really familiar because, uh, I mean, basically he took that base engine, modified it a little bit, and updated it. And, you know, it's, a, it, from, it's real easy to slip from the campaign games into, the, into his games. And then you've got your uh, play-by-email. Uh, you've got your AI. You can switch out the AI. You know, your set advantage, all that 
good stuff. A whole bunch of different uh, views that you can do. Oh, one thing I always forget to do. Let's see if I can remember how to do it. Uh, yep, all right there. Turn on the uh, the names, the map names. I like having the uh, the map names on. This kind of gives me an idea of where I'm fighting, and I just like having map names on. So you know, a whole bunch of whole bunch of administrative buttons you can play with. And then, you know, scheduled reinforcements, you know, we're playing as the pack, so here's all the scheduled reinforcements, lots of buttons. If you like buttons, this has got buttons on it. Um, the games run about $40 a piece. Uh, I think some of them may go up to $60. And it really, in the grand scheme of things, that's not a lot. You know, people may be out there complaining because of the graphic quality. Oh, that's sad, that sucks, eh, it's not worth it. It really is, because what you get in it is phenomenal. Normally, the base games uh, have anywhere from, I think, 20 to 30 scenarios, plus a couple campaign games. And the nice thing about it is it's also got campaign editors, so you can make up your own scenarios. And there's a modding community out there. Uh, one of the biggest modders out there is a guy, a screen name goes uh, Volcano, who does scenario modifications and does artwork modifications. And I will say right now, I am not using the stock graphics uh, for the units over here on the left hand side over here I am using Volcano's mods and why I mean virtually everybody I know uses Volcano's graphics mods why John Tiller just doesn't hire him to do all the unit graphic illustrations I don't know but you know it is what it is um, and since they're all JPEGs it's real easy download them just replace the JPEG files and and I, I just honestly think that 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 what Volcano does looks graphically better than, than, than the unit indicators that, uh, that, that Tiller uses. And Volcano usually goes ahead and throws in some alternative scenarios and, you know, just a little tweaking things like that in, in his packs. And they're all free. So, you know, we just go to his website and download them. And he's pretty much done, uh, done, done a mod for pretty much most of the, the Tiller games. Um, but, so, like I said, each hex is one kilometer. This is one of the smaller scenarios. So, you know, the actual initial first day attack, uh, punching through the folded gap of the 11th uh, Armored, Ca Armored Cav Regiment. Um, and there are a couple of you guys out there who I know worked in Germany, and these are some of your old stomping grounds, so I'm sure you, I'm sure you recognize uh, some of the names here. Uh, but the, yeah, the scenarios range in size from this. Let's uh, let's see if I can do. Let's pull up. Okay, well, let's just go. Let's let's just show you what the full campaign map is. All right, the full campaign map. I will go ahead and bring up. This is a map. East and West Germany, and. Pretty much this entire area here is the campaign map in the game. And we're looking at 250 kilometers wide, deep by 150, 175 kilometers deep. Let's see what that looks like in, in, in terms of the game. So I go all the way over here. To the east, and as we can see, this is pretty much eastern Germany. You can kind of tell where eastern Germany and western Germany is by all these fortification markers. Wesser, Eisenach, you know, Thurgerwald, Sonnburg. So that's kind of the eastern German part of it. Now let's go ahead and scroll and scroll, and scroll, and scroll, and scroll, and scroll, and oh my god, we finally got to the other side. Um, Massive, massive campaign. The actual campaign, if you look down here, 126 turns long. This isn't the biggest campaign. The big campaign is 180 turns long. If you have a desire for strategic grand grand strategic gameplay 
at the platoon company battalion level, you're going to love this. <laughs> I don't know if I'm brave enough to tackle the, 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 the full campaign. Um, I've tried a couple of the bigger scenarios and it's like, I don't know, that's getting a little bit too, too big for me. But, uh, yeah, this is, uh, a lot of the Tiller games have maps that are pretty much this size. You're, you're not paying for the graphics. You're paying for the sheer weight of scenarios and you're paying for how big this game really is. Um, and if you're into very long-term campaign games, you know, you're going to love this. This is this is what this is this this game is made for. Plus having all this actuals, you know, the the extra scenarios and and what have you. So, um yeah, I just wanted to jump in, uh, do do a little overview on uh, on John Tiller Games and uh, a little overview on uh, Full to Gap 85 because we are going to be playing that, and hopefully I'll be able to get the first gameplay video up here real soon. It, it's come to my it's come to my attention that that more of you like watching me uh, the decisions I make and how I play a game. Rather than me actually doing unboxings and, you know, these are what the rules are because I usually get those wrong anyways. Um, that the more of you seem to enjoy my decision-making process, probably because you get to sit back and go, <laughs> that guy's an idiot. I'm not a clever man. I know this. But I like playing games. Um, I so You sometimes lose a little bit of that when I'm, when I'm doing a, a actual tabletop game because I'm trying to remember the rules and keep the video flowing and I make a lot of mistakes that way. But computer game, it just comes down to me making the decisions. I just, all right, this is this is what I'm going to be doing. This is why I'm going to do it. And we're going to see what happens. Uh, so that's basically what we're going to be looking at this. I don't know the scenario I've chosen. I've already got the chosen scenario in my mind. Uh, I don't know if I'm going to do the full scenario because it's like 24 turns long, but I am going to do enough videos to basically just show how the gameplay goes, and if you're into this type of game, you're probably going to really like this. If you're not into the grand strategic, I mean, it's like I, I have heard people saying, it's like, you know, all right, the entire, say, Budapest campaign, Operation Conrad, it's like, you know, 180 kilometers from one side to the other, and you're fighting with you know, basically platoon level. <laughs> it's like, I'm not going to move tens of tanks around on a map that big. It's not for everybody. Not really sure it's for me either, but I have fun with it. So <laughs> we'll be back. Thanks for sticking around and watching everybody. Appreciate it. I'll talk to everybody later.